I present before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing that you hearken to the commandments of Hashem, your God, that I command you today. And the curse, if you do not hearken to the commandments of Hashem, your God, then you stray from the path that I command you today to follow gods of others that you did not know. You have two options. There's no middle ground. There's no gray area with Hashem. He simply says, you have bracha, you have klala. What does he say? You have bracha, or you have klala. Either your life is blessed, or it's cursed. Doesn't tell you all, oh, maybe there's nothing. Blessing or curse. We don't understand what blessings are. We don't understand what curses are. We think Hashem is joking about the curse. We heard the curse. Curses are scary. If there's a blessing of a curse, obviously, if I'm, if I'm smart enough to understand what this verse is saying, you don't need to explain to me that the blessing goes along with me doing what you said, and the curse goes along with me going against what you said. Obviously, I understand, but no. HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows his creation. He says you have a blessing and a curse. The blessing is if you do what I said. The curse is if you go against what I said. Hazal says that the reason why there's only a dozen is that we simply do not understand what a blessing is. So it would simply be a waste of time and a waste of space in the Torah to detail the blessing. We wouldn't understand what it is anyway. Yetzirah is going to get you off, off the road. Yetzirah now changes uniform. He becomes a Satan. Satan comes from the word Mastim. Mastim means that he rats on him. He goes up to Shemaim. He becomes the prosecutor. He goes to Hashem and says, Hashem, you see this Rasha of yours? What Rasha? Your son, your son. He's still going to shoot Torah. He went to have a couple of drinks with the guys. This is your son, Hashem. What an embarrassment in Shemaim you have. What an embarrassment a person has in Shemaim when Akadosh Baruch Hu, his father in heaven, watches this movie of his son. No, Hashem is not happy with this. The devil is Satan takes advantage. What do you think? Things you're going to Another uniform. Who will become? Malachah Ma'avesh. Malachah Ma'avesh is Shem. You know, somebody desecrates the Torah. You send the Torah. You send the Torah, Shem. I have mitah. Death penalty. No, Shem. Can I go to work? Can I go to work right now? So now we have to pray that we have some schuyot somewhere. We have a tzaddik grandfather, tzaddik grandmother, right? some mitzvah we did that we forgot about. Some potential that we have, something that's going to fight for us against the Malach HaMavit. So once again, Parashat Re'eh, he tells us again, there's a Rakhai Naklai. Now the Beit Levi says that Bitachon will save you from jealousy. And he says that in addition to all of the other benefits of having Bitachon that we've already discussed, one who has bitachon will be rescued from jealousy because jealousy is what makes the bones rot according to Shlomo HaMelech chapter 14 verse 30 of Mishle, Proverbs. Jealousy, Rabotai Yekelim, is one of the things that HaKadosh Baruch Hu detests. So much so that if a person dies without doing tshuva for jealousy, he's only guaranteed one thing. He will not be resurrected with the dead. One of the 13 principles of faith is that you have to believe that there will be a resurrection of the dead after the Mashiach comes. When one has bitachon and is convinced that everything Hashem does is good, enod milvado, there's nothing else but Him. There's nothing else but Hashem. If you constantly think that there's nothing else but a Kadosh Baruch Hu, nothing in the world can hurt you. You become untouchable. If you're constantly thinking that, it's so powerful that it's constantly a sgula that they teach to people. Listen, you want protection? Think enot milvado, enot milvado, enot constantly. A lot of people talk about emuna. A lot of people love to discuss emuna and bitachon and things of that nature. But in reality, very, very few among us actually have emunah or bitachon at all. 
Where's the problem? The problem when you become crazy and you have no assurance whatsoever that Hashem knows what He's doing. Akadosh Baruch Hu is the best policy in the world. Akadosh Baruch Hu is even better than that. He's free. What you gotta do? Pray. Do His mitzvot. He already promised you time and time again. Your life will be full of blessings. So what do we do? We did a few mitzvot. But we still want some insurance. We go and put all of our trust in the worst insurance company on the planet. What is it? People. We put all of our faith, all of our trust, all of our future relying in people. How so? You're forbidden from being a chanfan. Unfortunately, people do this day in, day out. As if the salvation is coming from them instead of actually realizing that it's simply a Kadosh Baruch Hu using them to help us. All they do is decide whether they're going to be the vessel that Hashem uses to run His world. That's all that's in our hands. All that's in our hands is our decision of whether we will be the vessel that Hashem uses to fulfill His will. You forget that a Kadosh Baruch Hu is the best insurance company in the world. And that's what David Melech tried to tell us on Tehilim 146, verse number three. He says, "Al tiftechu ben edivim beben adam she'en lo tshua, etzer ucho yeshuv laadmato bayom ahu avdu ashtonadav." David Melech says, "Do not rely on nobles, nor on a human being, for he holds no salvation when a spirit departs." He returns to the earth. On that day, his plans all perish. Only in Akadosh Baruch Hu, you're only allowed to rely on Akadosh Baruch Hu. But not just when it comes to money, when it comes to everything. We have to understand, if you're going to put all of the credit, and all of the uh, power in the hands of people, you'll fall into their hands instead of the hands of Akadosh Baruch Hu. Someone knows that Kadosh Baruch Hu is watching all the time and fears Kadosh Baruch Hu. You can trust that person with anything. Why? Because it doesn't matter where he is. He knows that Kadosh Baruch Hu is watching. Meaning, Abu Karim, when a person has bitachon, whether he's 14 or he's 40, he knows that whatever slice he has in his life, that's his slice, and nobody else's. And whatever he doesn't have. Not his place. We have no place, no place next to the Shekhinah, no place next to the salvation, no place next to anything good. Why? Because we've been calling a Kadosh Baruch Hu, someone that makes mistakes our whole life. We've been Kufrim our whole life. Why do we want Hashem to, why do we expect Hashem to resurrect us? But like I said, Rabbi Taya Karim, it's not just about having money. It's also about having merit. So it's not just about having money. It's about having the merit. That merit comes with our own tshuva. So the Beit Levi says, this bitachon will generate love of Hashem and attachment to Him because the one who trusts in Hashem will not remove his mind from the one whom he trusts.